That is the closing bell this Friday, February 25th. This is Yahoo Finance Live. I'm Emily McCormick here with Brad Smith and Rochelle Akufo. As we see markets trading, uh, closing rather sharply in the green for a second straight session. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up more than 800 points or 2.5%. That is its best day so far of 2022. The S&P 500 up about 2.2% and the Nasdaq Composite up 1.6%. Now let's turn over to our market panel. Also here joining us now for more on the day's and the week's trading action. John Kicklider is Daily FX Chief Strategist, and Julianne Kosky is New Age Alpha Chief Investment Officer. John, I'll start with you. Quite the two-day rally that we've seen here on Wall Street. Uh, do you think this can continue, and what do you think were the main factors that really contributed to this risk-on tone? It could absolutely continue, but the question is how confident would anybody, any investor really be of that kind of move? I, I know I wouldn't be that confident. Um, I'm more concerned about volatility. The higher the volatility, and that means leaping higher, the more likely that uh, a sudden turn in the situation in Ukraine can turn into a dramatic move lower. Seeing the same kind of move uh, through the first half of Thursday trade that, and just get it again. Uh, so it it's a it's a good probability, but the potential for loss is far too great, and I think uh, it's probably best to be more defensive about being too brash about our, our calls for uh, a bullish view. And Julian, what do you think about this? How concerned are you at this point about further geopolitical tensions and the situation that we're seeing right now play out in Russia and Ukraine, uh, potentially sparking more volatility and turmoil in these markets, despite, again, what we've been seeing this week? You know, I, I would be amiss to say that I wouldn't be concerned, but there's almost nothing you can do about it except go back to basics and do what you know you need to do to invest, right? I, I think this can go either way. You don't know which way this is going to go. There's so much vague and ambiguous information out there right now that it's not very clear which way things could actually go. So, you know, in the absence of uncertainty, you really have to rely on a different way of looking at at market metrics. For us, it's looking at probability of outcomes. And so we, we would focus on that and we would just urge investors to really look at the look at the basics and the fundamentals of the underlying companies they're picking. I think if you want to try and overlay what's going on in the market, you can only do yourself an injustice. And John, to that point then, what are some of the metrics that you're looking at amid this volatility that you're focusing on? And what are the safe havens then that people should be looking at for opportunities? Sure. I take a little bit more of a global macro uh, approach than Julian, but um, I am interested in terms of what the situation is in Ukraine. And, and he's absolutely right. It, it, there's uncertainty and that can offer a relief rally if, let's say, the situation dramatically improves and we get a little bit of a bid just from that broader enthusiasm. But at the same time, if that also occurs, we we revert back to the situation with inflation and the probability that the Fed is going to start hiking rates, uh, which is also a, something of a concern for many sectors in the market. So I keep very good uh, uh, view on safe havens. Uh, and when it comes to safe havens, my preference is, is usually with the dollar um, and the representatives of the dollar US treasuries. Uh, but can't be totally defensive in a market if you're looking to make uh, returns and a long-term opportunity to kind of keep track with the S&P 500, much less beat it. Uh, but dollar is my number one. Gold uh, is certainly another consideration in these kind of markets. And Julian, as you look at some of the share prices, you've noted General Electric as one of the companies with a high probability of failing to deliver growth implied by their share price. You've also felt the same about a lot of um, a lot of other utility companies saying they look relatively unattractive. What is making them look so unattractive to you right now? Well, as we've had some of these rotations going on in the market from growth to value, what you've seen is you've seen inflated stock prices for some of these companies. Now, any time you have an inflated stock price, you have to think what that means to the company, right? From the company's perspective, the company is going to have to deliver more growth to support the price of that stock. It's just classic math, right? So what's happening is those stock prices are rising at a rate which are essentially is dislocating from the underlying fundamentals. The companies haven't actually delivered this growth in the past to justify the current prices that they're trading at. So if you look at it from that perspective and you calculate a probability of failure, in other words, what's the chance you know, uh, you know, um, General Electric could fail to deliver the growth implied in its stock price, it's quite high just for the simple math. It hasn't delivered the growth that is implied by its current stock price. 
So when we look at stocks, what we want to understand is, you know, has this company delivered the growth implied in a stock price? And has it done it consistently? Because the likelihood that it would fail in the future is, is pretty low. So again, we divorce ourselves from traditional portfolio management ideas, and we focus more on this idea of probability of outcome. John, when we think about the movement that we've seen over these past two days, there's this other thought out there that there's a lot of short covering that was potentially taking place. If that fizzles out finally, then what should we make of the activity that is still yet to come, whether that be strictly in relation to the international conflict or whether that be in relation to forecasting or trying to read what the Fed is signaling? Sure. So the I'm very much of the probability uh, projection as well. Uh, those are the two principal concerns that are on my uh, radar. If you have a situation in Ukraine, and this was a, let's say, a short cover rally, uh, then you have a much broader concern and situation. The opportunity that actually comes, uh, that, uh, well, something of an opportunity. Uh, when you have a pullback in markets because of, let's say, fear related to geopolitical tensions, you also have something of a Fed that has shown historically that it's very corrective when financial and economic uh, stability looks in jeopardy. So it's something of an offset. On the other hand, if the Ukrainian situation improves, they are more likely to uh, push forward with their inflation fight, especially after their favorite inflation indicator just this past session uh, showed that it's hitting the highest level since 1982 on the headline figure. So it it really has a greater risk of maintaining volatility principally, but also a much greater probability of seeing continued declines in broader markets as we go into the weeks ahead. And so Julian, I guess kind of on the piggyback of that, if we were to see the Fed continue forward in its path and we did see some sort of a resumption of this broader downward movement that we'd been tracking over the course of the last few weeks on reaction to what we'd heard from Bullard, what we'd heard from Bowman, as well as what we'd heard from Bostick over the past couple of weeks, where do you then position yourself in that time? Do you continue to either buy into some of these names on the dip as we'd seen that buying activity come into play this week? Or is this a kind of wait and see mode territory for you still? No, no, it's not wait and see for us because mm -hmm. from our perspective, you know, we want to stay invested and this just represents an opportunity. I think from looking at uh, the Fed, I think that most of the time the reaction is overdone. Right, there's interest rate hikes and there's interest rate hikes. What are we talking about here? We're talking about 100 basis points. I don't know what that number is going to be. But in general, if you look in the past, interest rate hikes like this just don't have the kind of impact the market actually prices into them right now. So you're watching again these rotations, right, from from growth to value. And you know, I think actually the classic exact opposite problem is going to happen, which is you're going to find yourself at earnings season owning stocks that you believe were going to protect you from this. But in actual fact, all that's happened is those prices have risen. And now the pressure on the company to deliver growth to support that stock price is actually going to be harder, where it's going to be a lot easier for the traditional growth stocks that we've so come uh, that we've become accustomed to. So I think that often these things are just overdone. I think you stay invested, but you have to do your homework. You have to look at companies individually. It makes me quite nervous when I hear of investors talking in terms of these great swaths. Oh, well, values in favor and growth is out. Fangs are not working. It, it just doesn't work. You've got to do your homework at the individual stock level. Well, there's the message there. Do your homework. A big thank you to our panel there for helping us digest the market's movements today. John Kickleiter, Daily FX's chief strategist, and Julian Kosky, New Age Alpha's chief investment officer. Thank you for your time today.